Today on the Clean Power Hour, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do what I call a quick take. Hey, I'm Tim Montague. Check out all of our content at cleanpowerhour.com. We're on all the audio platforms and, of course, here on YouTube where you can see the video. And, you know, I've just been thinking about the grid and what's going on with society. And there's a tremendous opportunity for the United States right now. And that is reflected in what's going on in Washington, D.C. And it's, it's kind of a both and situation. On the one hand, technology has now reached a important threshold globally, meaning we have some new technologies that leverage renewable energy, wind, solar, and battery storage being the three core technologies. These technologies allow us to green the grid. And take solar, for example, solar panels, otherwise known as solar photovoltaics, they convert sunlight to energy. Photons are super abundant. We get 10,000 times more sunlight from the sun than we need to power all of society. 10,000 times. Look it up. It's a thing. And then, of course, those photons are also creating the wind. So all wind comes from the sun. The sun is the source of all life on Earth. Without the sun, we're just a dark, cold rock in space. So, but the Biden administration got this infrastructure bill passed last year in 2021, and now that's turning into real opportunity. And so today I'm going to talk about two of those opportunities. And if you like this content, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe on your favorite podcast player, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, etc. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a rating and review. That really helps other people find the content, which is my mission here at the Clean Power Hour and the Clean Power Consulting Group, which is a consulting, uh, con a consulting business that I've launched now, which is helping clean tech companies accelerate their sales. So I do strategic sales and marketing consulting and, and I do also special projects. So for example, if you're a developer looking to get into new markets, I can help you analyze those, especially here in the Midwest. And I can help contractors who are trying to same thing, break into new markets or expand in their existing markets. I've been in the solar industry full-time now for five years, but I grew up with energy in my blood. I was doing backyard solar thermal with my dad in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm born in the Midwest, but grew up in, in the Southwest. So I've come full circle and I'm here for you and I'm here to speed the energy transition. So let's get into the news stories that I wanna to cover today. And I wanna put this on screen. The DOE has launched what's called the Clean Energy Core, and this is a $66 billion program with a B, big program. They're going to hire over a thousand individuals to speed the energy transition. The Clean Energy Core is a diverse group of talented individuals committed to public service and with a mission of supercharging the clean energy revolution. This is your opportunity to join us in making that future a reality. Regardless of whether you're new to clean energy or have been doing this work for years, we want you as part of our clean energy core. And it goes on to list a bunch of types of people they're looking for, okay? So listen up. If you're a young professional, a career changer, or just getting into school, this will give you a guiding light. Business administration, communications, engineering, finance, grants and contract management, human resources, information technology and cybersecurity, huge topic there. Legal, legislative affairs, physical science, program and portfolio management, project management, public policy, safety and occupational health. So as I've said many times on this channel, it really doesn't matter what your passion is, you can find a toehold in the clean energy transition. And I can help you as well. So reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm TG Montague on Twitter. 
and I will respond to your messages. So please reach out to me and I will help you get your toehold in the clean energy economy. The second story that I want to talk about today is the U.S. is tackling transmission barriers to net zero ambitions. And this is also related to the infrastructure bill. Let me put this on screen. And this is a story in Wind Power Monthly. You know, one of the challenges with connecting renewable energy systems to the grid is grid capacity. The grid is a, you can think of it as a system of pipes. It's made of wires, of course, or cables as we would call them that are you know, carrying electrons around the grid. It is the largest machine that humans have ever invented. It has been largely the same for about a hundred years since it was invented by Thomas Edison and his colleagues. And so now the DOE is launching an initiative to invest $20 billion in what they call building a better grid. This is very important. There's a bottleneck for utility scale wind, especially, but wind and solar projects across the US where they've got site control. They have willing landowners who wanna lease their land for solar and wind projects, but they can't get interconnection with the utility. And, and these would be what I call the super grid, um, the independent system operators, the ISO grid. So here in the Midwest, we have MISO and we have PJM and we have SPP. And if you just Google ISO grid, you'll, you'll find those resources. But this initiative is to support the build out of long distance high voltage transmission facilities to help the US reach Biden's goal of 100% clean electricity by 2035, okay? That's in 14 years, right? Or 13 years, 2035. Well, here we are in 2022. And there are hundreds of gigawatts of wind farms stuck in interconnection, this article points out, due to lack of transmission capacity, okay? So we need more grid capacity. What does that mean? We need more grid. We are going to triple the grid in the United States when we electrify transportation. Right now, new car uh, electric vehicles are only a few percentage points of new vehicle sales, okay? But mark my word, the, we are at the tipping point. And by 2025, between 2025 and 2030, all, it's going to completely shift and we're going to completely phase out internal combustion engine cars, which is great because then we all have less carbon pollution going into the atmosphere and we can begin the process of decarbonization. We really haven't begun that process. I mean, we, we've started to, but, but the PPMs of CO2 in the atmosphere are still going up globally. Okay. So that's what I mean when I say that, even though the, the green energy transition or the clean energy transition is moving along and wind, solar and battery storage are the fastest growing sources of new energy on the grid globally, we're still growing our carbon footprint through things like the expansion of internal combustion engine transportation, through the expansion of coal and natural gas power plants. We're not building coal here in the US, but we're building coal plants in places like India and China still. So anyway, we're gonna triple the grid. We need a lot more electricity on the grid. Uh, when you stop using internal combustion engines, that is a huge amount of energy that you need. And you're, we're gonna get that from grid power, from wind, solar, and storage. Remember, there's 10,000 times more solar hitting the earth than we need in a year to power all of society, okay? We're rich in solar energy. Now, I also want to encourage you to check out more of our content here. There's so many great topics and I'm going to just go to clean power our, okay, cleanpowerhour.com 
Let me put that on screen and show you around here. Now, in the top, you find episodes link videos that'll show you the link to the YouTube videos. There's also a YouTube channel link right there. And then you, you see all the episodes here. Just last week or this week, we dropped James Geschweiler from Catalyze. They are bringing rooftop solar to non-owner occupied facilities. This represents 90% of the real estate in America. Huge percentage of real estate, just all these rooftops, a lot of warehouses, but also hospitals and office buildings. Those buildings can host solar rays and the, the owner can then collect rent from this developer named Catalyze. So anyway, that's a thing. Matt Lensink and Lisa Katz at CEM Engineering, cleaning up thermal power. Great episode. We talk a lot about next-gen uh, thermal, solar thermal. We talk about carbon taxes, their influence in the Canadian market, and hydrogen. And hydrogen is coming. Uh, you're going to see a lot more content from me about green hydrogen. You take green electrons from solar wind, right? Solar and wind or wave or hydro. There's all kinds of clean energy sources and water. You zap the water with an electrolyzer and produce hydrogen and oxygen. And then you store the hydrogen either in a compressed form in a tank or you can make it into a solid form. And this is a thing. It's also gonna be used in industrial applications. You can make green steel with green hydrogen. Um, land stewardship in the solar industry with Red Kirby of Kurtech. Great episode on land conservation as it relates to solar construction. And Rhett and his colleagues are down there in Texas, but working across the Great Plains and the Midwest. Um, just lots of, lots of nuggets of wisdom there. And then we broke down the new CEJA legislation. I will continue to bring you lots of information about CEJA here. Illinois is now gunning for a 100% clean, uh, clean grid by 2050, okay? And um, so lots and lots of new solar wind and battery storage coming into Illinois. We have an amazing uh, battery storage program, incentives for storage, which make the battery cash positive in two years. And then, and then of course, me and John Weaver, my co-host, are bringing you the news roundups We've been doing those a little less frequently because we have so many interviews, but, um, and then long-term storage, talking about hydrogen with Ally Power and Joseph Alfred, Dome Energy with Claudio Spadaccini of uh, Energy Dome, great episode. So, um, and then I'm going to do a series on Bill Nussie's book, Freeing Energy. I did a great interview with him. You can see here, I think that's episode 60. Uh, November of 2021. Check that out. And Bill Nussie has a great podcast also called Freeing Energy, but he wrote this great book that I'm going to um, do a series. I'm going to do like a five or six part series on this book called Freeing Energy. I probably won't go through it chronologically, but I'm going to kind of pick and choose. And, and uh, you know, Bill interviewed some real thought leaders like Amory Lovins, who founded the Rocky Mountain Institute and, and soup to nuts, he's just, he, he's covered the distributed energy, the DG world, soup to nuts, and interviewed many thought leaders uh, from the US and beyond. So you can look forward to that in future episodes. Please visit cleanpowerhour.com and check out our audio content, check out our video content, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and please reach out to me. I can't tell you how much I love to hear from my listeners. I do this for you. And I do this for the clean energy transition. And so get into dialogue with me and good things will happen. I promise I have a huge network on LinkedIn. I love to connect with people on LinkedIn. So please reach out to me. I'm Tim Montague. Let's grow solar and storage. Take care, everybody.